Welcome to the Let's Script in Drad. This is your host Maurice, also known as Skull, and this is the first video in the new series of, I guess we can call them Let's Plays. In this video series, I will be implementing uh, draw, new draw elements via draw scripting. And today, as you can see, we are going to work on custom trapdoors. So a couple of days ago, I think it was yesterday, <laughs> I've been talking to some people on Drought Chat and someone expressed an idea to make a trapdoor hold. And since I'm a big fan of trapdoors, I even made a game which I linked in the chat, which was based on the trapdoors called Trapdoor. And I have decided that I should be able to copy all of the objects from that game, all of the types of custom trapdoors into Drot. And this is what we're going to do today. So, uh, as you can see, this is a simple custom puzzle I built. I've got some preliminary work done. I've worked on the graphics and there are one, two, three, four, five, six types of different trapdoors. The default one, which should drop when you step off them, a 2 HP trapdoor and 3 HP trapdoor. So basically, if you step off this one, it will turn into this one. If you step off this one, it will turn into this one. And the horizontal, the orthogonal trapdoors uh, only drop if you move off them either vertically or horizontally. And the diagonal. The diagonal trapdoors work exactly the same, except, of course, you can step off them uh, horizontally without any harm, and, and when you step diagonally, they will drop. The orthodiagonal trapdoor works like uh, the mixture of the two, so stepping off diagonally will turn it into a orthogonal one, and vice versa. So we're going to script them today, and I'm going to warn you that it will involve a lot of scripting, I might not be able to speak for longer periods of time because I'll be, I will be deep in thought. And also a warning because it might be possible but it will be a big pain in the butt. I'm not going to make these trapdoors work for everything so they will only react to the player. At least for now. Maybe, maybe I'll change in the future, I don't know. But for now they will only work for the player. So let's start coding. Uh, as you can see uh, we start with two things. We need some floor under our trapdoors because the player in at least the default role is not capable of walking over pits. So under each trapdoor we need a floor. Now there are f each trapdoor has its own character and they have their graphic set so that's the things I have done before I started recording and each of them has the disappear and imperative goes display. The reason I do it is so that if they were set to not visible, if you press out in the editor, you see the characters as the graphics they'll appear when playtesting. And when they're not visible, they're partially transparent, which makes it a bit more difficult to look at the room and inspect that everything is all right. So just, just for that, they're visible from the start and they turn invisible and set their ghost display to true only after only on the zero of turn all right i'm going to start with the regular trapdoor mm. we will need a variable uh, local variable if you don't know uh, if you don't know how variables work in draw you can look into the uh, help files but basically uh, there are three types of three types of variables the Actually, two types and two groups. The yeah, the built-in variables. So these are the ones starting with an underscore, and the custom ones, which you can name however you wish. But as far as I remember, yes, variable names must begin with a letter or period and contain no punctuation, punctuation except underscore. So yeah, underscore variables starting with underscore are reserved for the system variables. Uh, so, but we can create a variable under any name we want. We can assign it a number or a text, and then we can work with the variable. We can also write simple formulas. For example, we can make it two multiplied by my player's x position modulo five. For example, we, we can do this. 
and we will add this variable. So if this turns out to be 7 and our stiff was 8, uh, okay, 7, so it will modulo to 2, it was 8 at the beginning, so in the end, SDF stack, SDF SDKF will be set to 10. And anyway, the other group, the other way to categorize the variables is the local variables, the ones that start with my, uh, and global ones, which start with anything else, actually. Uh, I'm going to get to the local variables in a moment. Uh, so basically, the my variables are different for each character, for each script. Uh, so my x corresponds to the x position, starting from 0, of this current script. So if I set this to 7, it will move only this script. It won't move anything else in the room. If I wanted to move the player, I would need to set x. If I wanted to move something else in the room, currently it's not possible. I could make a global variable, and provided this script would run before the object I want to move, uh, that object could react to the variable change. But, for example, we are, it is not possible to move monsters. I guess it's it could be a pretty interesting uh, comment to add, so teleport something to somewhere. But I digress. So, there are also my script variables, and I will talk about them a little bit more during the course of the video. And it's possible to define local variables uh, of your own, for example, what, I, what variable I, I am just going to remove this one first. So a variable I need is is player on me. So this a variable starting with period is a local variable. Uh, if I set it to anything, this won't be shared between any other objects in the game. Mm. On the other hand, if my SDF SDFK, if I set it to seven in this object, any other object that accesses this variable will also know it's set to 7. Let's get rid of this variable because we don't need it. Alright, uh, I will use it as a boolean or a flag, so I will, at the beginning I will set it to 0. Uh, and now I'm going to define a function in my script uh, called update if player on me. Uh, and I'm going to s return at the end, return, yes, and, okay, I'm going to assume from now on that you know a little bit about scripting, so you know what labels are for. You might be unfamiliar with the go to sub, or go sub, and the difference between go to and go sub is that if you use go sub and the and during the execution of the label, the script encounters return. It will return to the place where the go sub was called less, last. So, uh, if I called it here, and I said, I don't know, this, set to 1, set to 2, so this code will look like this. Okay, imperative, uh, disappear the script, change the imperative, set the variable, let's get rid of this for now, go sub. So it would go to this label execute this line of code, and counter return, and that would take it back here and continue execution from here. So it would then set is player on me to 1, then again enter this label, go to the here, and actually I don't know what happens if it encounters return in any other case, but I'm guessing it would just skip, skip this line and end the execution of the script. Okay, uh, so my function. I'm going to need to set my script x to my current position, my script y to my y position, x, y, yes, y, and my script variables are kind of like customizations to other comments. I'm going to use a comment if, if and, if wait for entity player, never, never, never mind where. So basically it means that if my script x, if any of the my script variables is set to anything other than minus 99999, nine, 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 uh, sorry, minus minus four nines, basically, uh, it would replace some of the numbers you provide by default to this comment. So in this case, it would look 
uh, it would ignore the X and Y position of this command, so 0, 0. It actually would take uh, my X and my Y, so it will wait for entity player at my position. Basically, that's what it means. So if this happens... Uh, oh wait, I want this. Remove this line. So if this happens, we are going to set is player on me to 1. In any other case, so we need an else. Let's set this variable to 0. Back to 0. And now after this code runs, we need to set my script x to minus 4 lines and my script y to minus 4 nines to make it have no effect on future comments. One important thing to note is that my script variables are prefixed with my, so they are local. If I set my scripts to anything here, it would completely ignore this in other objects. So each object has their own set of my variables. Another important thing to note is that the documentation is kind of lacking on the descriptions of excuse me, my script comments, so what it, oh crap, <clears throat> what it means, some tea, what it means is you're going to either need to experiment or guess. Usually it kind of makes sense, so if a comment, comment has an X, this will work with an X, if it has dimensions it will be width and height, and an optional flag. It is. It gets kind of complicated for comments like, for example, move. So west, east, north, south is basically x and y, and there are two flags. From the top of my head, I have no idea if this one would be width or in this one height. I'm guessing that would be the case. But it also might be that four bit turning will be width, and single step will be the flag variable. No idea. Alright, so we have a function, so at the, basically, at the very beginning of this script, I want to know if the player is standing on my tile, or if the player is not. Next, we will go with an infinite loop, mm, label loop, and we need a go to, to this loop, we need a wait zero comment to, stop the execution just in case and basically there's a thread on the forums which explains exactly how weight works and because there was some issue with speed potions and I've made a long post about it but basically weight zero turns in pretty much all cases when you are not using a speed potion is exactly the same as weight one turn when you have a speed potion things get a little bit difficult. Alright, so I'm going to go simple here, so I'm going to change this function. Uh, wait, I'm going to make it so that each turn this executes, so I can remove this from behind the loop and include it in the loop. So what I want to do now is, right now it's capable of determining, determine of guessing, of understanding, of it's possible for it to know <laughs> when the player is on top of the trapdoor or not. So in this case, if the player is not on the, on the trapdoor, I'm going to just inject some code here because due to the limitations of the engine, we don't need engine. We don't need to mm, worry about pretty code. So I'm going to wait for the variable. Is player on me being one? If this is the case, this trapdoor should drop. So basically we need to do build pit underneath me. And because my X is already my script X is already set to my position, I don't need to change anything here. I accidentally made it two tiles high. We need to build pit here. We need to set imperative goes display no, no goes display. Uh, we're going to add a label which ends the script and the script or even kill the trapdoor because why not uh, so if that's the case we are going to go to kill the trapdoor and also one important thing if you're inside a go sub 
So if you're inside a function which can return, and you go a regular go to, like this, as far as I remember, and I'm not sure, so if I'm wrong, please mention this in the comments. And any return here will simply not work. So basically there is an internal stack. Uh, basically the zero level of the stack is the code being executed. If you make a go sap, there is another level added. So, okay, I made a go sap. If you return, go back here. And you can nest this, uh, this call, so you can make go sap inside the go sap, and it will remember where to go back. But if you make, at one point, a... Okay. <laughs> uh, if you make a go to, regular go to, this stack will drop down, it will be removed, and it will follow again on the on this level. I just noticed I've been making gesture, gestures with my hands and they were kinda off the camera. But it doesn't matter. Mm. So remove this return. Bold pit, imperative now goes display. Imperative, kill myself. So die. Okay, let's see what happens. Yep, as you can see, our trappers are dropping. Now, isn't it great? There is no effect right now. I'm going to see if there is an effect for trapdoor. Uh, game effect? Trapdoor. No. But I'm going to attempt something. So, there is this image overlay. I'm going to go with... Um, I need to create two variable so let's go here let's create a new um, temp x and temp y you're going to see in a moment what I'm what I am about to do temp x and we need to set it to my x multiplied by 22 because 22 is the edge of a tile in draft so okay now image display image overlay, set x, temp x, the image we're going to use will be trapdoor 1 HP, and it's correct, okay, set x, set y, temp y, now we're going to make it fade, so I'm going to inspect the help files, script comments, and image overlay comments, fade to alpha, Transition the image from its current alpha value to the indicated value over the specified time interval. So we're going to make it fade to alpha. Fade to alpha, fade to alpha, fade to alpha. I'm going to forget this in a second, so I need to keep repeating it. Fade to alpha. Fade to alpha. The, uh, to alpha zero. And let's give it one second to fade. And now we are going to see if this is going to help us in any way. Because I'm not sure if the image overlay effects won't be just removed when the object is killed. Nope, it works. The travelers are fading off. Alright. Uh, let's now change the speed of it to about 300 milliseconds. Okay. Now this should look a little bit better. Yep. Okay, we can later add the sound effect, but let's ignore it. So we have the... We have the single trap draws kind of done. Of course, if we place a mimic, mimic, where are you? Mimic, god damn it! Oh, there you are. If you place a mimic on them, and we can place mimics on them, it won't work, which is some kind of a puzzle potential, I guess. Uh, sometime later, I'm going to see in a future video probably to see if it's even possible to make it work but for now let's get back to our trapdoor we're going to just copy the script go to the 2hp trapdoor and we're going to add a new local variable called mm, actually no actually yes actually no uh, we are going to make it a little bit simpler we just make it fade to alpha 2hp Okay, and don't build the pit. Imperative no goes display, okay. Imperative die, yes. And we also have to do... Uh, do we need to change these variables? No, because we're going to use them. But just in case, let's place a copy here. 
and I'm going to explain myself in a second. Generate entity, trapped or regular. I just want to see if it works. Yeah, I'm starting in a bit. How great is it? Yep, it works. So, what I just did was mm, change the code a little, so when, instead of dropping the trapdoor, removing the floor underneath with pit, uh, we just generate an entity of the regular trapdoor on the same spot, and this trapdoor is killed. And the reason I copied the MyScript variables here is because at some point in the future, I, want, I might want to copy this script somewhere else, and change it a bit, and I can... It might be possible for me to call this function from somewhere else without setting the MyScript variables before, and this could lead to a problem uh, because then it would generate this trapdoor in the corner, and I would have no idea why this is happening. I would waste a few minutes, maybe half an hour, maybe an hour, trying to debug it, and that's a waste of time. So we have two HP trapdoors. Let's go make the three HP ones. Or remove. Uh, did I remove the code from here before I paste it? Yes. And we do exactly the same thing, except we fade the three HP trapdoor, and we create a two HP trapdoor. Yes, here. All right. Let's see what happens. Drop, drop. Yep. It's working. Alright, we are on 21 minute mark. Uh, I think we can... We have enough time to... We have enough time to do... Do the twister and actually implement the other two. So, let's see. Let's go with the regular one. Copy. I'll start with the orthogonal one. Alright, uh, if the player is no longer on me, and if... Uh, let's see... Do we have access to any mathemat mathematical functions here? Like absolute or something? Input variables? No... No... Go sub, wait... Set var modifying variables? Delete, deleting, deleting, monitor, comprehensive variable, reference list. No. No. Okay, but it's it's fine. It's fine. Uh, <coughs> so we're going to make another function to avoid nesting. We return. Uh, was orthogonal move. We will create a new temporary variable. And crap, I'm modifying the wrong file. Uh, the wrong character. No. Okay, orthogonal. Uh, let's remove this for now. Okay. Is orthogonal move. Mm. We are going to create a new variable called temporary. Turn. You set it to zero, and now if my x is the same as player's x, and if, and if player's y uh, equals my y plus one. It's not going to be the best piece of code, but whatever. <clears throat> so basically, if the player teleports away, it should not drop. But if the player moves down, it should. So, set to 1. Uh, I wish TSS 502 was already released, because we have access to else if in there. But... No can do! Sorry. Sorry, Skull. You have to suck it up. Alright, let's put an ounce here. And pick. Let's just copy it. We don't need no wait, we don't need this else. If my y is equal to my y and my x is different from this x by one in this or the other direction. 
we return. Okay, go. Sub. Let's make a check and and if it happens that the return variable is equal to one, we should kill the traveler. Okay. Okay, it doesn't work, but that's fine. My x is equal to player's x, and my y is equal to player's y plus 1. Alright. Minus 1, alright. My y is equal to... Okay, okay, okay. Simple test. There is a problem here. Mm, just in case, I'm going to paste it here. Let's debug with speech. Ah, so speech in loop x is our equal y is our equal Let's see what you can tell me. You can't! Interesting. Uh, let's see. Good sub public player on me. If we. Oh, right, yeah. I need to step on and off you. And it doesn't work. Nothing happens! Alright, then, let's stop the video and continue with another one. Thank you for watching and see ya!